Uh, for so many years, the voice of uh, Martinsburg football, and they are back at Wheeling Island Stadium for another championship run, and yet another time that the local radio stations covering them can't do the broadcast. I'm not as offended as I used to be, but uh, <laughs> because it's not your ball. Of it, wax it's anymore. still it's still very frustrating. It was interesting because after the game, uh, I ran the camera uh, for the guys uh, with the call on on Saturday, and uh, Video Productions is a, a group out of the Charleston area that does streaming of games in Southern West Virginia. Their guys were up there running the, their cameras and so forth, and apparently they're not aware of all of that because as we're wrapping up, they're like, "Hey, have fun next week. Good luck next week. You know, enjoy the game next week." And we're like, yeah, "We we don't." get to do it what yep. and it's like you, you've not experienced this yet um you know well welcome welcome to the experience of following your team uh through uh, 13 out of 14 games that they play and, and not then the 14th the game. last one being told we'll take it from here for the uninitiated is this a rights thing it is it is, yep. WVSSAC owns the rights as the governing body that oversees high school athletics, and, and they set up the playoffs, and so it's their baby. And so if you want to do the preliminary games, uh, you're going to fork over a bunch of money, and then when the most important game comes, you're just going to fork over the whole broadcast. We're not even going to let you In, do it. Uh, Maryland, they have you can't even find the championship games on commercial TV any longer. They used to be on the CW network in Maryland, and now it's streamed. So if you're not if you don't pay for the stream through NFHS, hmm. you can't get access to these games unless you go to them in person. And this is the another you know <clears throat> we we keep hearing about oh this is amateur athletics and whatever, and <laughs> what are they what are they doing to these what used to be free to the community mm-hmm. to be able to watch. On a commercial television station, it's now a pay-per-view stream yeah. is, is where it has all gone. There's something bad about that. At 9.37, let's welcome in Senator Mike Stewart out of uh, Kanawha County. He is a former U.S. attorney and a candidate for attorney general as well. Mike, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here. So uh, did, did you and Bill Powell collaborate in your days as, as a U.S. attorney, uh, Mike? We did. We did. Bill Powell was great to work with. And the consummate professional, I used to joke with him periodically because we were both U.S. attorneys together. And we'd have uh, we'd have these meetings with other U.S. attorneys. And I'd refer to him as the junior U.S. attorney from uh, from West Virginia only as a joke. I mean, because there's nothing junior about Bill. He's a consummate professional and and uh, a really, really good lawyer. Yeah, we've used Bill on the program many times to help us with some legal stuff uh, in regards to understanding some certain court decisions and and whatever, and he's just a great guy. Uh, I want to bring you on the program today because, uh, obviously, Ryan Weld made the announcement that he would not run for attorney general, which left you and J.B. uh, McCuskey as the two main combatants for that uh, position. We just had J.B. on the program in the previous segment. Your thoughts about Senator Weld dropping out and what is now a two-man race between you and Auditor J.B. McCuskey. Well, listen, I think everybody's got to make their own decisions. Running statewide is a huge task. I mean, it's one thing to run for state senate where most of us have three or four or five or six counties. But running statewide in 55 counties is incredibly taxing. And uh, I respect Senator Weld. I serve with him in the state senate. I'll continue to uh, in this uh, coming term. He served our country. He certainly campaigned with energy, and I say that with uh, with Senator Weld uh, dropping out of the race, the most uh, competent opponent in terms of being a uh, practicing lawyer and somebody who's worked as a prosecutor is no longer in the race. I read that quote that you had on there, and I was going to ask you to elaborate about that a little bit. Uh, you kind of just did right there. It was, is, is that your main main issue there with uh, McCuskey? No, I think there's a whole host of issues. And listen, I have a big agenda. And when I was U.S. attorney, had a big agenda, and we did big things. Prosecuted two members of the state Supreme Court for the first time in West Virginia history. One Republican, one Democrat. I didn't care about political uh, party or partisan politics. Largest elder fraud prosecution in the history of West Virginia. Largest Medicaid fraud takedown in the history of West Virginia. More drug takedowns than any U.S. attorney in the history of West Virginia, and perhaps most important, we took enough fentanyl off the streets to kill more than 40 million people in a state of 1.75 million. No, my biggest issue with with JB is when you look at my record 
It's a record of preparing over 20-some years as a lawyer at the highest levels, practicing at the highest levels, uh, versus somebody who has not practiced law now for at least eight years uh, and who I think has a lot of things in the record that folks need to be aware of. Uh, One of those being, uh, I'm a big, strong supporter of the Second Amendment. I think whoever the next attorney general is ought to have a proven record of standing in support of the Second Amendment. And uh, State Auditor McCuskey uh, voted four times while he was in the legislature, four times against uh, the Second Amendment and against concealed carry. I think that issue alone would disqualify you from being the attorney general in West Virginia But beyond that, uh, here's a candidate who's taken truckloads of cash, tens of thousands of dollars from Democrat liberal personal injury attorneys across West Virginia. Uh, In fact, the Democrat nominee for 2020, uh, Ben Salango, uh, contributed the maximum amount to J.B. McCuskey's campaign. Marvin Masters, Stephen Skinner from the Panhandle. Uh, These aren't exactly conservative personal injury attorneys. And granted, I don't want to paint all attorneys in the same broad uh, swath. There are some really great attorneys out there. Uh, But folks who are working actively for liberal causes and liberal agendas, I have to question why you'd take so much money uh, from those interests. And so I think as we get into this campaign, as we dig into issues, I think these things matter a great deal, and uh, my campaign could perhaps be uh, defined in two words, experience and three words, experience and expanding freedom for West Virginians. And I'm just a big fan that experience matters, especially when you're talking about attorney general, uh, the fight we have with the federal government to be able to drill frack and mine to keep them out of our personal lives, be able to run our families ourselves and determine how our children are raised. Uh, you need an attorney general that's, uh, that, that's hands-on, understands how to practice law, and knows which side of the courtroom to sit on, and has worked at the highest levels, and I've done that. I'm glad you brought up the campaign contribution items because this has become a topic of conversation since Senator Weld made the comment that he dropped out because he didn't want to compromise his principles based on attracting donors. And it leads to the question, uh, does that mean that people who are accepting donations are compromising their principles for maybe what they might vote on in the future? Or Yeah, so I, yeah, so I, I don't know about Senator Weldon. I don't want to, I guess, comment on what he meant by that. But I can tell you that, uh, in fact, I'm not the most prolific fundraiser in the race. Uh, I am comfortable in my skin. Uh, I probably uh, am uh, a little bit more controversial than some other candidates because I just tell you what I think, and I say what I mean, I mean what I say. Uh, I've been this way my entire career. Uh, I sometimes joke, you know, I've been married for 30 years to the same woman, an incredible uh, lady, and we have uh, two wonderful children. But I sometimes joke about that and say that, uh, you know, my wife doesn't like me half the time. Uh, But it's worked for our marriage over 30 years. I'm not going to compromise any principle in the course of this campaign. I don't believe being elected uh, by voters, many of which don't know you, that somehow it's a validation of who you are or of your character. I think the best thing we can do as folks who want to serve the public and serve in roles like attorney general is be who we are and let folks know who we are, and let them vote on the basis of what they view as most important to them. If I win or if I lose, uh, it's no reflection as to who I am, but it would be a reflection as to who I am if I was willing to compromise what I believe and what I say and what I do and what I'll vote on on the basis of receiving some contributions. I just think it'd be counterproductive. It'd be a horrible way to be uh, involved in public service. And uh, I trust voters at the end of the day to know issues and that they support me uh, to help my campaign. Uh, but I can tell you, I've never been asked during the course of my career or my uh, run for the state Senate or my run for attorney general uh, to say, hey, how are you going to vote on this issue? And I'll decide whether I'm going to give you a contribution or not. I'd find that offensive and it'd be somebody that I wouldn't want a contribution from. 
this is John Gilstrap. Good morning. But isn't that what you're implying about JB having I mean, you call out specifically liberal donors and then you name specifically some of the liberal donors? Isn't that an Im Im implied accusation of, of a little too strong a term of influence paneling? But it's kind of the, the root of it, isn't? Oh, I think it goes deeper than that. It's in fact, it's worse. It's not about influence peddling. It means that that's where I'm, I trust that that's where JB stands on the issues. Uh, JB McCuskey taking all that money from personal injury attorneys. I don't think he's in any way. I would never espouse that he's taking dollars for his actions uh, if he becomes attorney general. I just think he agrees with that view, which is completely out of the mainstream completely not consistent uh, with the vast majority of West Virginians. I think it's important that who our next attorney general is, and I campaigned on this when I ran for state senate, I think it's important that your state senator, I think it's important your attorney general, I think it's important that your governor reflect your values. And so I think the idea of taking tens of thousands of dollars, truckloads of cash from liberal Democrat personal injury attorneys reflects who you are. And so I in no way, though, believe that that money is going to influence the way he's going to vote. I think that money reflects the way he's going to, 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 uh, to, to run the office of attorney general. But at the end of the day, whoever wins the office is the attorney general for the entire state. So it, it will be the attorney general for liberals as well as for conservatives. So shouldn't the I don't see the harm of of taking the money from from one source versus another. I mean, it, it, to imply that um, that there's this monolithic liberalism that that to take money means you support everything that the, the liberal cause says, it, it just seems sort of simplistic to me. So I think so I, I disagree with you. And so I think to take that position would be to say, don't look at how I voted on gun control. Just take my word for it that I'm going to reflect the values of West Virginians who support gun rights in the Second Amendment. Different thing. And so it's a different thing. It's you no, I don't think it's different. Well, at all. no, I, I mean, if if, if we look at voting records and where people get their dollars in their campaigns, it reflects who we are as candidates. But you're yeah, you're demonizing the source of money. We're not discussing the absolute value of the votes they're two different things in my mind i would think and well so let me let me put it this way i think it's important that voters have all the information available to them if somebody is anti-second amendment if somebody's voted four times against concealed carry i think it's important for folks in west virginia whether they're for gun control or whether they support uh the second amendment I think it's important that they have that information available to them. If my opponent is taking tens of thousands of dollars from liberal Democrat personal injury attorneys, I think it's important that voters have that information to be able to assess whether the values that my opponent uh, thinks is most important, uh, whether that falls into the calculation as who they're going to vote for. I mean, I'm a pretty conservative guy. I've been pretty consistent over the course of my career. Uh, I've had a big prosecution record. I've run uh, an operation larger than the attorney general's office. In fact, in my final two years as U.S. attorney on a budget of about twelve and a half million dollars, we brought in about thirty four million dollars between uh, punitive settlements and forfeitures with respect to the folks that we were prosecuting. We were actually profitable for taxpayers. And so I think all of these. Uh, all of these facts are relative uh, to voters making a determination as to who's going to serve as attorney general. What do they value the most? I'll also point out endorsements matter, too. I've been endorsed by the West Virginia Coal Association. I've been endorsed by uh, the West Virginia Family Foundation. I've been endorsed by uh, the automobile dealers all across West Virginia. Uh, and we have more endorsements uh, on the way. I've been endorsed by two veterans groups. I think it matters. They take a look at who you are and what your values are, what your voting record is, and make those decisions. Uh, but I do think it matters. All of these things fall into the calculation as to who you're going to vote for. Matt Miller. Um, 
Mike, have you been approached by any of those uh, same attorneys and or like attorneys and and had to say no to potential d- donations? You know what? I, so I haven't. Uh, I, so I haven't focused on trying to raise dollars uh, from folks. I'm a big tort reform supporter, and so I think we've got. Uh, too much money flowing around from lawsuits across West Virginia. It hurts small business. It hurts taxpayers. It hurts our business climate. We've made improvements in the tort system in West Virginia. Uh, but I don't think the idea of raising money and trying to attract funds uh, from uh, those entities that I don't necessarily agree with more of would be the right way to go about uh, running for attorney general or running for state senate or any other office. And so, um, and, and I'll say this, I haven't been as prolific at raising dollars as my opponent. Uh, he was running for governor uh, for a, a, a good period of time. Uh, his campaign coffers are full, so this is going to be a tough race for me. And I'm lucky that we have a recent poll that shows it within the margin of error. Uh, but 67 percent undecided, those dollars are going to matter a great deal as we get into this campaign. And as those folks who are undecided try to figure out who they're going to vote for, uh, I need I need as much help as I can get. I encourage everybody to go to make WV great again dot com uh, to help our campaign. But I certainly want to rely on grassroots as much as we can and ordinary West Virginians to help our campaign. You mentioned earlier having a big agenda. Uh, here's an opportunity to uh, let our audience know. What is that agenda that you would have as uh, our new attorney general? Yeah, so first and foremost, I think one of the things we have to continue to do and we have to continue to pound on Washington. I was asked by somebody, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing West Virginia? I think it's liberal policymakers and unelected bureaucrats in, in Washington, D.C., they force feed down on us the policies that we don't want in West Virginia. So first and foremost, we're going to continue to focus on uh, drilling, fracking, and mining and federal overreach. I'll be incredibly aggressive in that arena. I have a lot of experience working in the federal courts. I was able to build a big, effective team in the Southern District of West Virginia to make sure we were incredibly effective working in the federal courts. And unlike no time in our history, Attorney General matters, perhaps the most important position on the ballot, because it's going to affect every West Virginia family, from Martinsburg to Charlestown to Charleston and Huntington. It matters a great deal. But other things that are going to be on my plate that I think are incredibly important is CPS and CPS reform. Uh, we, we have a system that's just not quite working the way it ought to be in West Virginia. And uh, we're going to spend a lot of time trying to make sure that our CPS system works and is effective and focuses on one thing, our kids. And uh, we had that situation not that long ago here in Charleston in one of our burbs where two kids were found locked in a barn. It's not okay. And we need to make sure that, that it's a priority uh, for all of us. And then thirdly, I have a lot of experience, more experience than anybody perhaps who served uh, in the role of attorney general in the opiate area. And I've said this, uh, the revolving door has got to stop in West Virginia. We need to get serious about our solutions on the issues of opiates, fentanyl, and the drug scourge. I'm one of those folks that believe we can win this. And if we ever get to the point where we say, uh, this is a foregone conclusion. It's just a way of life. Uh, it's unfortunate. We need to continue to combat it. Drug dealers should be behind bars. I say this often. There are efforts at criminal justice reform to speed up the revolving door from inside to outside. But I'll say this. If you're a drug dealer uh, feeding those poisons to our children and our families across West Virginia, uh, we need to build another prison because that's where those folks ought to be and so uh those are my three top priorities but of course there's a whole host of other things that we'll be focused on whether it's medicaid fraud uh domestic violence that i've worked a great deal in as u.s attorney or elder fraud one of the the least reported most sinister crimes across west virginia and across the country 
uh, elders and seniors and uh, older citizens in our country are being besieged every single day by fraudsters, trying to separate them from their life's uh, savings and earnings, uh, whether, whether it's lottery winnings or a tax statement, all of which are fraudulent. But we need a good, vigorous uh, consumer protection division at the attorney general's office that will uh, really focus on these things. I can only have about a minute left, but I wanted to ask you, in regards to some of your agenda, would you need to expand the Attorney General's powers to include more criminal jurisdiction? So I called for that earlier. So that would depend on the legislature granting it. But I think in the area of corruption and state agency fraud, it makes sense. I'll point out that there was nearly $90 million of COVID unemployment fraud in West Virginia. How much of that's been prosecuted so far? virtually none of it. And so state agency fraud exclusively and corruption uh, that touches the heart of Charleston ought to be something the attorney general ought to be able to take a look at while working with fellow prosecutors from across the state of West Virginia. But in no way would I want to expand uh, the authority of the AG beyond those very exclusive small areas that aren't getting the attention that they need. Mike, I appreciate your answers, and I appreciate your time this morning. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Senator Mike Stewart.